Greetings, and thanks for joining us for today's presentation, RFPCB Prototyping, Why and House. Today, we're going to be taking a look at prototyping RF printed circuit boards and why in-house technology is such a good fit. A little bit about us. We are LPKF Laser and Electronics. We manufacture milling machines and laser systems used in printed circuit board prototyping. We were founded in 1976 just outside of Hanover, Germany, and that is where our international headquarters still resides. Our North American headquarters is located just outside of Portland, Oregon, which is where the presentation is being recorded today. To get started, let's talk a little bit about RF printed circuit boards. As you know, there is so much complexity that goes into RF designs, it's a little bit like wizardry. Whether it's the geometric intricacies of the board features, or the properties of the materials being used, these are the most advanced PCBs out there. Now because of all this, making sure the design is dialed in correctly during the R&D phase is of the utmost importance. There are a few goals when prototyping RF PCBs. The first goal is to test functionality. This is the most basic goal of any prototyping environment. Does the design work as intended? The second goal is to optimize performance. Now this is where you begin to see a little bit of difference between RF designs and say digital or analog designs. Here you're saying, could it get better? Are all the board features working as good as they could? And the third goal when prototyping RF boards is quick turnaround. This is extremely important with time to market deadlines shrinking and new products coming out all the time. There are two methods for prototyping RF printed circuit boards. The first is outsourced prototyping and the second is in-house PCB prototyping. I'd like to give you a quick overview of both. Looking at outsourced PCB prototyping, this occurs in a production environment with chemical and factory processes. One great thing about outsourced PCB prototyping is that there is low initial expense. Generally, it doesn't take much more than the price of your order to get started. Finally, prototyping PCBs via a board house is the status quo for a lot of people. For many, this is just what you do when you want to prototype a PCB. Now looking at in-house PCB prototyping, instead of chemical processes, you're looking at either mechanical milling or laser etching. A difference between outsourced PCB prototyping and in-house PCB prototyping is the initial expense. You'll see a higher initial expense with in-house PCB prototyping because you will have to purchase a milling or a laser etching system. However, in-house PCB prototyping does feature extremely quick turnaround. Now this phrase quick turnaround takes on a whole new meaning when you're dealing with in-house PCB prototyping. If you go on a board house website, they'll often speak of quick turnaround as one to two business days. However, with in-house, your standard turnaround time for a single or double sided board is going to be under an hour. So obviously there's a big difference between outsourced PCB prototyping and in-house PCB prototyping when it comes to time. So I'd like to take a look at a timeline comparing prototyping a board in-house versus outsource. So let's say your design is ready to go. What do you have to do next if you're outsourcing? You have to interface with the board house, get your design to them, as well as any other special instructions your design may require. Once the board house receives and processes your order, they will chemically etch your board. And once it's off the rack, you'll get it via delivery and you will have your PCB. Now the typical time frame for this is three to five business days. And for many companies, as long as that's falling within the same calendar week, that's okay. However, as I'm sure you know, RFPCBs usually require multiple design iterations before the design is finalized. So let's say you do have to make a revision to your design. You go through the process again, and now you're looking at a time frame of six to 10 business days, which is starting to get a little uncomfortable for a lot of companies. 
Now let's say you go ahead and have to make a second revision on that board, which is quite common with RF designs. Now you're looking at a time frame of 9 to 15 business days. And for most companies, this is more than they would like to spend on prototyping a single board. Now let's take a look at this scenario with in-house PCB prototyping. Once your design is ready, you import it into the software for the system. The system will then either mill your board or laser at your board, and in under an hour, you'll have your single or double-sided PCB. Let's say you do have to still make that revision to the design. Now you're looking at a processing time of one and a half to two hours. And finally, on your third and final iteration, your total processing time is a mere three hours or less. So obviously this is a big difference, and I wanted to have a little fun comparing the two methods. So let's take a look at the day in the life of an R&D engineer prototyping PCBs outsourced versus in-house. So with outsourcing, once your design is done and you're ready to prototype your board, what does the end of that first day look like? Well, hopefully if everything's gone well, your order has been placed, but then what? From here, you're maybe organizing your emails or reaching for other things to do, but there's really no momentum for your current project. Now with in-house PCB prototyping in the span of a single day, you could have that third iteration complete. Along with this, your boss would probably be very happy with your work, and for you, you actually get to move on to the next project and stay busy. Here are some quotes from in-house PCB prototyping users about the time saved factor. Ryan Orsi at Docon says, design iterations used to take three to four days each. With the LPKF system, we've gotten our turnaround time between iterations down to a matter of minutes. This other quote from Paul Clark at Honeywell says, thanks to our LPKF milling machine, we took a project that should have taken 10 weeks and did it in only one week. Now this last quote from Mr. Clark really gets to the heart of the example I just showed. If you are having to make multiple design revisions to a project, then if you're outsourcing, that is going to extend the project over a matter of weeks or months. Whereas with in-house PCB prototyping, multiple design revisions present no problem, and you can have your design done in less than a week. So what does all this time save mean? So as we talked about with the day in the life example, increased productivity is a huge benefit of all this saved time. Would you rather be waiting or creating? Me, I'd rather be creating. Another benefit of this quick turnaround is a faster time to market expectation. So not only is your physical prototype getting done much quicker, but here is where you can actually see a culture change begin to happen. Now your development schedules can be restructured to allow for products to get out there quicker and for more innovation to occur. Now speaking of innovation, with this type of quick turnaround, you're able to fix things right away, keep your synapses firing, and maximize the potential of the design. I'd like to bring up this quote from someone who I consider to be the godfather of electrical engineering, Nikola Tesla. Tesla said that he doesn't think there is any thrill that can go through the human heart like that felt by the inventor as he sees some creation of the brain unfolding to success. In-house PCB prototyping allows engineers to work quickly, try new things, and take your company to a whole new level. And the type of environment Nikola Tesla is talking about here, employees are incentivized to perform well. And this is a great unintended positive consequence of in-house PCB prototyping. So now that we've looked at the benefits of in-house prototyping, let's take a look behind the hood to learn a little bit more about the technology behind the systems. In-house PCB prototyping systems work straight from CAD data to create PCBs. This eliminates any middleman in the process. Just import your industry standard files such as Gerber, DXF, or NC Drill straight into the software, and from there, the machine will etch the design straight from the data. This not only gives you a very streamlined process, but it allows for very accurate board creation. Another great thing about in-house PCB prototyping is that no matter what material you're using, whether it's FR4 or Rogers or RT Duraid or fired ceramics, you can make it on the same machine in-house. 
When it comes to RF designs, there are so many factors that can determine which material is right for the design. Whether that's the electric constant, loss tangent, thermal conductivity, digital speed, who knows. Now because of this complexity, not all board houses work with all materials. Oftentimes you have to go to a specialty shop for your designs with these special RF materials, and usually these specialty shop have a specialty price because of their expertise. However, it doesn't matter if you're working with one RF material or multiple. With in-house PCB prototyping, there's no need to go to different service providers to get your needs filled. You can create PCBs on a variety of materials all on the same machine. So what can you do with your data and your raw material? Well, you can create PCBs up to eight layers. Now it's a common myth that you can't do multi-layer boards with in-house prototyping technology, but that's simply just not true. Now on that PCB, you can do everything you need to do to create the features your board needs to perform the best. Whether that's the creation of circuit features such as traces and spacing, whether that's drilling holes, routing the outside edge of the board, or to paneling the board from the panel itself, you can do it. Not only that, but you can also use a controlled milling or a controlled ablation process to create pockets for things such as embedding chips. You can also remove organic material from metals, also known as skiving. Going beyond just a standard PCB, something that's very important for RF engineers is that in-house prototyping machines can create antennas, filters, and test boards. In addition to this, it can be used for a variety of other applications, whether that's engraving front panels, creating board housings, or finishing your boards with SMT processes whether that's through-hole plating or solder masks, as you can see here on the screen. However, I'd like to bring up something about test boards. With in-house prototyping technology, you can create test fixtures to evaluate the working performance of RF board components. Now, this could be discrete transistors, ICs, sensors, or any other RF components you're working with. You know, I have an anecdote about this. We worked with a semiconductor company who purchased one of our prototyping milling machines. They purchased this to produce custom application boards to support their sales team. Now, as soon as the test fixture team got wind of this, they immediately saw the value of having a tool to instantly create test fixtures, and they literally stole the machine out of the applications department and took it to theirs. Now, this ended up working out well for us in the end because then the applications team ended up getting another system. But this is another great example of the type of unintended positive consequences in-house equipment has on an organization's culture. In-house prototyping systems can be used in so many ways that there's a value that may not be quantifiable at first, but will prove its worth once you are working with and getting the most out of the in-house prototyping system. So I mentioned you could create boards, antennas, and filters. Here on the screen, you can see some that were created by actual in-house prototyping users. On the left is an RF transceiver system made on a milling machine on Rogers 4003C material. On the top right, you can see a hairpin filter that is created on FR4. And on the bottom right, you can see another application on Rogers 4003C material. This is a dual band antenna that operates at both 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. You know, I really like showing you this slide because it gives you an idea of what people out there are doing on their systems. You can really see the high quality applications people are creating. Now speaking of high quality, I know that with RF and microwave designs, geometric precision is very important. Fortunately, in-house prototyping systems are very accurate machines that have high resolution and repeatability that allow you to create fine features very accurately. Not only that, but when you're working with a straight end mill on a milling system or a vertical laser beam on a laser system, you're crafting straight sidewalls that ensure boards are created accurately for proper testing. This is great because you can avoid problems such as under etch and over etch associated with chemical processes. Getting into numbers a bit, with an in-house prototyping system, you can create very fine features. On a milling system, you can create traces with spacing as small as 4 mil, and on a laser system, you can create 2 mil traces with spacing as small as 1 mil. Now, these numbers are very important when it comes to traces that need certain tight angles 
or if you're creating receivers on boards who have unique fine shapes. Resolution of a half micron means that your board features will be formed with accuracy. It's kind of like milling in super high definition. Finally, repeatability within one micron means that you'll get the same features each time you need to produce the design. Looking at a quick overview of outsourced prototyping technology, when you're outsourcing your prototyping, you are sending your R&D to a production environment. Now, outsourced processes are very good for repeating high quantities that are already proven and tested, but they're maybe not the best for designs that are still being worked out. Now, why is this? Well, board houses use a number of sequential processes to create a PCB. This includes film development, exposure, chemical etching, drilling, routing, and SMT finishing if you need it. Now all of these different steps are performed on different pieces of equipment, and it is very hard to maintain quality control over such tight tolerances in this type of environment. Now the use of RF substrates only compounds this problem, and this is why you see some board houses that don't offer RF materials, as we discussed before. If you compare the outsource process with the in-house process, which gives you complete user control over the entire R&D phase, you can see that in-house technology is a step ahead of the game when it comes to prototyping. Before we get into the conclusion, I did want to mention the one concern with in-house prototyping, which is the cost. So with outsource prototyping, as I mentioned, you do have a low initial expense. And if you're prototyping only one or two boards a year, this is fine. However, when you compare the cost to make a board in-house versus outsourcing, you can start to see the price difference made up. It's kind of like going out to eat versus making food at home. Many factors that involve RF boards drive up the cost per board at a board house. Whether this is quick turnaround, using a custom design, or using RF materials as we've mentioned, these things really drive up the price of the board. However, with in-house, you never have to pay a premium for these RF features. Now, it's true that with in-house prototyping, there is a high initial expense. You will have to purchase a system that will probably qualify as capital equipment and require purchase approval. However, if you're familiar with the term cost avoidance, you'll know that sometimes a company will have to spend money to make money, which is possible in this case because of the lower cost per board associated with in-house prototyping. Now, because you don't have to pay a premium for quick turnaround or the use of RF materials, we see a common customer break-even spot of 12 to 24 months. I wanted to bring up another quote. This is from Dan Johnson at Modco. He said, The LPKF system has saved us thousands of dollars per month. When you factor in shipping costs associated with board houses and the time it takes to wait for the results, the LPKF system has paid for itself within a year. So as we begin to wrap things up, let's go ahead and revisit our RF prototyping goals. So your first goal is to test functionality. Well, at its most basic state with in-house prototyping, you can create very high quality boards that match your CAD data so you can find out if the design works. Your second goal that's unique to RF prototyping is to optimize performance. Having the ability to make revisions quickly and cost effectively allows you to get the most out of your design. And finally, quick turnaround. We've obviously talked quite a bit about the differences in time between in-house and outsourced PCB prototyping. With in-house prototyping, you can shave your development schedules from weeks to hours, and that is huge. When you add all these factors up, it's easy to see why microwave journal readers stated in a 2012 poll that the most important tool in their design arsenal was a PCB prototype milling machine. I hope that answers some of your questions about in-house PCB prototyping, but if you do have more, feel free to contact us. You can reach us by phone at 503-454-4200, or you can email info at lpkfusa.com. Thanks everyone for watching, and feel free to share this presentation with anyone else you know who may be interested. Bye-bye.